least 14 killed, another 17 wounded. Well, new Up details out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, where officials say a gunman killed four Marines. There has been a shooting at a free speech event featuring cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Three victims, plus the shooter, are dead. And then there are... So what do you do when there's a terrorist attack? The world's not becoming a safer place. Governments of many nations, including our own, are telling people to run, hide, and call for help. While that works sometimes, maybe it doesn't. You can't outrun a bullet. You can hide, but if you're not hiding behind a proper barricade that stops bullets or stops an explosive blast, what good is that? And even when you call for help, sometimes 5, 10, 15 minutes can elapse before first responders can get there. We look at two paths. You can either run and hide or you can fight. Either you choose to engage and try to intervene and stop whatever madness is happening or you get away from it. If you're going to run and hide, make that your course and go. Don't start running and then decide should I go find some place to hide. Pick a direction, go and keep moving. If you're going to fight, then you get in the fight and you fight to win. So the situation will dictate what your options are sometimes. Sometimes the best option will be to run and get out of there. Other times, the situation will dictate you have to get into the fight and stop the threat. If you're with your family, do what you gotta do. These are things you have to think about before certain things happen. Um, you don't wanna be thinking about these things while it is going on. It's better to have a plan or an idea, a general direction on what you wanna do if something were to happen. I believe these are the good things to talk about with uh, friends and family. Same brings up a good point. Everybody has a plan, Mike Tyson said, until they get punched in the face. What we want you to do is be that punch in the face. We want you to be the one to throw that guy or those bad people off their game so you can change it up. The number one tool that we have to do this is awareness. You can be the best gunfighter in the world, you can be a ninja, you can be the number one MMA fighter on the planet, but if you don't see it coming, that's the end of it. Somebody can walk right up behind you and take your life from you, which we've seen happen many times in this world, if you're not aware. We call it situational awareness. Um, you don't have to be on 24-7, uh, patting people down as you're walking by. You have to notice things. We call it color and contrast. Color and contrast. Something doesn't fit, right? If you get that feeling where that's not right, keep an eye on it for a little bit. Don't just ignore it. And when you do notice things, regardless if you're right or wrong, it shouldn't stop there. If you notice something's something's off about a certain individual, the next thing you should be doing is looking for exits, looking for hard cover. It doesn't cost you anything. Continually be thinking of places to, um, different routes for exit, cover and concealment, what the difference is, where you should be going, what direction you should be going. It takes a little bit of time. Eventually you'll get to the point where you just automatically see it in the corner of your eye and you know if something were to happen, you would go in that direction. But it does take time and practice to do that. But like you said, it's free. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. That's great. Nobody gets in these situations and says, geez, I wish I spent less time thinking about what I could do to have saved my life. If this is no different, and this is the same stuff you should be doing for a house fire, uh, for a vehicle being submerged in water, maybe there's a, a, a something at a mall or a public place where people start making a mad dash to the exits, you need to think about those things, otherwise you're the person getting trampled, right? I agree. One of the next things that we're gonna talk about here is what happens if you decide to fight. We're not making this video and none of the stuff we do is to try to convince people to be a hero. We're not heroes, we're regular people. I don't want to be a hero. There's guys over in the sandbox that do it for a living and they, that, that's what they're paid to do and that's what they're trained to do. What we're trying to impress upon people it is, is it is your responsibility to be alive tomorrow or the next day or as many years as you have on this earth. It's nobody else's. Yes, we have uh, first responders that we pay to protect us, but ultimately you are the one responsible to see yourself through to the next day. So if you decide to fight, you need to fight to win. You don't, you don't enter into a, a, a life and death scenario like that where you're teeter-tottering on whether or not you're willing to take uh, violent action against someone that is putting violence uh, in your direction. You need to be committed, and when I say committed, I mean committed entirely to no matter what's gonna happen, I'm not stopping until this threat is stopped. All right, so you've made the decision to get in the fight. You gotta have a fighting tool. 
I hope you're not carrying a little five shot snub. We've done videos on this before, you can check that out. Why low capacity guns suck. But in this case, you need to have that fighting tool on you. It can't, can't be in your vehicle, it can't be in your locked desk at work, it can't be at home in the gun safe, it's gotta be on you. You gotta have backup magazine, at least one. Most people don't even think about carrying those things. You need to be able to use those tools. When we say use them, we don't mean go out on a flat range in perfectly well-lit conditions and place rounds on a cardboard target five feet away. You need to know how to use that in all light conditions. You need to know how to engage targets at various distances. You need to know how to uh, rapidly reload, how to get that gun back up working if you have a malfunction. It's a machine, things do break. What you need to be able to do though is deploy that weapon rapidly. So if we're aware of a problem, we decide to take action and we engage. All of these situations, time is always of the essence. The three, four, five, 10, 15 minutes that we wait for first responders to arrive, that's the difference between life and death for us and our loved ones. Sang's gonna talk a little bit here about what happens if you don't have a gun. Don't have a gun on you. We suggest getting some training in self-defense. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Krav Maga, I don't care if it's Taibo, Taekwondo. Taibo. Yes, nice. Taibo. Learn, learn something. And if you don't, it's your life on the line or your, the life of a loved one. I don't care if it's a broomstick. Do what you gotta do um, to try to stop the situation. Either be a victim or do something about it. So you're kind of talking, saying about areas where maybe concealed carry is illegal? Yes. Or maybe you're in a place like here in Illinois where uh, there's many public places that guys with the concealed carry are not able to lawfully carry. Is that what you're Yes, about? I'm kind of driving in that direction. If you don't have the option to carry, you should find something to be able to protect yourself. Regardless if it's the edge weapons with a blade, most people carry a little pocket knife or what have you. Uh, those things will do damage and stop, stop the threat. But when it comes to firearms, edge weapons or anything else, it's not about just owning a knife, a gun, whatever it is. You have to get trained and know how to use that thing efficiently. This kind of goes back to the plan we're talking about. So part of our plan might be a gun, but we need to have a plan for if we don't have it yes. or it could be taken away from us, we could run out of ammo, right? We talk about it all the time. You can have a gun, you can have a knife, you can have a baseball bat, but that's only part of the equation. We, we believe in it, we do it all the time, we're sitting there dry firing, we're at the range, we're taking classes. You have to train. If not, you're gonna end up hurting other people, innocent people. So I think uh, that's something that uh, you should definitely be spending time and money on. Very famous quote in uh, combative circles, your mind is the greatest weapon. And that's very true. You can have all of the fine stuff you see behind us. You see some weapons on the, uh, on the wall here. They're totally useless if they're not with you, if they're not able to be put in action, and you're not able to, to, to deploy them accurately and effectively. It's meaningless. It's like having a race car and not having the keys to it or having a guitar and not knowing how to strum it. You need to be able to use them if you're going to be effective. You know, one of the biggest problems with all of this, it isn't whether you should fight or not, it isn't the conditions or when and where, it's that we have, as a society have begun to train our children and, and uh, I guess society at large that we are helpless, that uh, uh, our fate is in the hands of somebody else and that's really uh, it's a sad thing and we are totally against it. People need to remember that uh, we're, you know, we're a nature, nation of patriots. Our, uh, our founding fathers were uh, shopkeepers, farmers, average men that rose up and beat back the most powerful army on the entire planet. And that's, a, that's saying something, that's in our DNA, that's in our blood. It's not normal for us to be preyed upon and run and hide. Predators prey on uh, creatures that they know they can catch and that they know they can kill. You don't see uh, a, a, a bear or another predator preying on an animal larger and stronger. They prey on animals that they can eat and catch. And this goes for any manner of two-legged predator. They go after people that they know that they can catch and kill. We need not be those people they can catch and kill. And that changes when we begin to take responsibility for ourselves. Uh, you know, what do you think about this? Uh, I, I totally agree with you. Um, we become very soft and um, people who are looking to do wrong are looking for soft targets. 
That's a pretty sobering thought, and I, I think you illustrated perfectly the the. I don't like to use the word problem because I'm a, I'm the kind of guy that likes to look for ways to solve things, and I don't like talking about the problem. But it is a systemic issue in our society. You said soft. We have become soft. Our children sit and play video games all day. They don't run and play. They're not building their bodies. We sit in offices. We sit in our vehicles. We're not out working in the fields and digging ditches and building things like we did for hundreds of years. Uh, our, our bodies are physically becoming soft. We eat poorly. We drink too much. We smoke too much, right? And then worse than all that is we've developed this mindset of this can't happen to me if it happens to me oh my gosh i don't know what i do it, it i hope it doesn't because that's just too scary to think about we've had students say to us thank you for teaching us how to use a gun but i don't think i can ever shoot anybody and we're like what so if somebody was hurting you hurting your child you would just let them take that from you saying looked up a video earlier and this has been all over the internet of some ISIS fighters that literally took people, lined them up single file, and walked them to a, a river's edge, shot them, pushed their bodies into the river, and the next person just sat there like a lemming and walked to the edge, let their life be taken, and was corpse was pushed into the river, one after the other after the other. And there was way more victims than there were fighters, right? These people could have turned, they could have done something but they did nothing and that's the problem is you must do something you must have a will to live you must have a will to fight and we're going to talk more about that fighting all right so we covered the basic steps awareness right you got to be aware of what's happening you can't react if you don't know what you're reacting to mindset I have this mindset that I am not going to be a victim, that I am going to prevail if a fight takes place, that I'm going home safe tonight and so are my loved ones, right? So now we need a plan. Sometimes those plans change. What, what's the old adage uh, that the German, uh, the German general said that uh, no plan survives first contact? That's the paraphrased version of it and that's true. Why? Because the enemy also has a plan and they can affect your plan. So we've got all those things, we get to the point where we're going to implement that plan and we actually decide to engage in a fight, whether we're, we're forced into it or we, we decide, like saying mentioned earlier, to intervene, intervene in, a, in a bad situation. You decided to do that. So you're going to fight. Now what? Uh, do you just walk in and pull your gun out and start shooting? I don't know. I'm not there. But once you engage, you need to have the mindset that you are going to convert any fear in you into rage and you are going to drive whatever attackers, whatever bad guys that are there into the ground until it's done so you can go home. If you get involved or you are trapped in one of these active shooter or terrorist scenarios, you have, you're dealing with people that are willing to murder innocents for no reason or whatever their religious or, or, or sick reason is to do it. There's no reasoning, there's no discussion, there's no begging. They've already decided to implement action against innocent people and murder them. The only reasonable recourse is counter violence. That's the only way to deal with that. And you must be willing to take that to whatever end may be. You might get shot, you might get stabbed, you might get uh, uh, hit. That doesn't end the fight. The fight ends when you're the last one standing and the bad person is not. We're not teaching you to kill people. We're not telling you to kill people. We're telling you to stop them. So you do whatever means are necessary and these are not happy thoughts. Bad things happen whether we think they're going to or not. Everybody knows somebody that's had cancer. Everybody knows somebody that's been in a car wreck. Maybe it was you. Everybody knows somebody that's lost somebody because eventually we're all going to be that somebody. Don't Put your head in the sand and think this stuff can't happen to you. Everybody that's involved in some type of violence like this, if you ask them, almost every single time they say what? I didn't think this ever would happen to me. I was totally in shock. We want you to say, I knew this could happen. Here it is. I have a plan. I know how to respond. I'm going to be okay and I'm going to do something about it. That's what changes the world. There's a, there's a story, what's the lady, who well, I forgot what city, Krupa uses the story, she was shot with a 357 through her heart. Not like around the heart, through the heart. She 
excuse me, continued to fight, killed her attacker and lived. She ended up getting surgery and was able to live and she's still alive to this day. <clears throat> the lights are bright in here. We're gonna discuss the, the, uh, what's up? Joe, I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of some work, what's happening? Connection between concealed carry and the potentiality of terrorism, something along those lines. Hold on, I need something cool on my head here like this. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you do when there's a terrorist attack? What do you do, Sang? Cut? Cut. Cut. 